Putin announces partial mobilization, warns West over nuclear blackmail. Says Russia will use all means to defend itself. This is not a bluff, says Putin. Russia moves to annex swaths of Ukrainian territory. The Russia-Ukraine war is having an outsized impact on the global supply chain, impeding the flow of goods, fueling dramatic cost increases in product shortages, and creating catastrophic food shortages around the world. Simultaneously, disruption to the flow of electronics, raw materials, and part supplies emanating out of China and other locales has seriously impeded global trade positions, forcing companies to recalibrate and in some cases, wholly reconsider their long-standing supply chain and partner ecosystems. All of us were waiting for this war to settle, but it appears that we're just in the beginning. So, as a business owner, how can you be resilient enough to continue operating your business during the war? In this video, I'll be explaining the best 7 strategies that you can follow, so you can continue operating your business during the war and generate more income. First, streamline remote work. For a digital agency, I see no point working from an office 9 to 5. We worked remotely long before the war and even the pandemic, and have grown into a fully distributed company. So, my advice for you is to establish policies for remote working in your company, this will help your team to find work-life balance. Let your people work unusual hours, trust them to do their best work when it suits them, and you'll surround yourself with the most loyal and invested teammates. In addition, this will help you to cut a lot of expenses such as office rent, electricity, and other bills. Second, use the cloud. People need a fully functional infrastructure that's readily available for them to jump into and continue their work. All the critical infrastructure, such as Jira, code repositories, backups, should be in the cloud. If I had some of the infrastructure on premises, it would remain under the constant threat of physical destruction. Most trusted cloud infrastructure providers offer built-in security and data availability controls for speedy disaster recovery. The third strategy you should follow is to nurture client relations. It is the dark hour that reveals the true value behind your partnerships. Committed customers will support you without a second thought. Always prioritize understanding your clients' expectations. Never let a discovery call goes by without asking what's on the prospect's wishlist, what engagement models they prefer, and what milestones they hope to achieve. Pay attention to how your client meetings go. If you've never had a laugh with your client, or if you feel overwhelmed rather than excited, that's a red flag. Instead of trying to win all the clients, focus on attracting partners with the same work ethic and outlook as you do. You want to work with people who prioritize results and team dedication over precise estimates and fixed prices. The fourth strategy is to stay agile. The year 2020 has taught us something important about change, it is more important to promptly react to changing conditions than it is to stick to a continuity plan. As a result, the moment we were affected by the Ukraine war, we knew we had to devise a plan B immediately. We surveyed our team to understand their views and readiness to relocate. Manage employee expectations and be transparent from day one. We clearly communicated that while we're in this together, each member is responsible for their work. To motivate my team to take action, I gave out relocation stipends in advance, with zero bureaucracy. People just needed to show up, take their cash. Office managers shifted priorities toward providing logistics assistance. The fifth strategy is to diversify finances. Capital management takes time to master, but the very first thing you can do is think of ways to diversify your financial resources. A government in the state of emergency may limit the amount of cash withdrawn and restrict other financial operations. It makes sense to look beyond international fintech like WISE and save up some crypto. Thanks to savings in several wallets and global payment systems, it's easy for us to pay salaries to relocated employees and cover imminent war emergencies. My emergency fund was ready both in crypto and cash to guarantee all-time access to the money. The sixth strategy is to keep hiring. I believed this during the pandemic and will emphasize again now, don't lay off your employees. When a crisis strikes, conservative businesses think of ways to cut costs, and downsizing often tops their list. My strategy is different, use this opportunity to attract top talent and grow your team. Despite the war, we keep hiring. While engineers generate income, marketing and sales reps can be requalified into lead gens, content creators, or volunteers creating awareness of the situation among foreign partners. The last strategy you should follow is to consider alternative sourcing. With businesses no longer able to depend on traditional suppliers, 
now is the time to either diversify partners or find alternative sourcing modes. While changes are necessary, there are ramifications. When you change suppliers or change your supply mode, your lead time might increase, and when your lead time increases, there will be temporary shortages.